Happy Thursday, beautiful people. Welcome to our Breakfast Club call. If you are just joining us for the first time, welcome. And if you are coming back, welcome again. Um, I'm super excited to be here with you guys. My name is Pamela Pacheco. And I remember when I first started and embarked upon the journey of entrepreneurship, I was looking forward to these calls. Not only was I looking forward to these type of morning mentorship calls because of the information I was going to receive, but I was looking forward to these calls because of the inspiration that I was going to receive as well. And we all know that how you start your day sets the tone for your day. Greatness in is greatness out and garbage in is garbage out. So one thing that I give you guys all is shout outs to each and every single one of you that understand that and therefore are doing your best to set and start your day off on the right foot. And somebody said that the chat is disabled. My apologies here. Let's see here. Here we go. You should be able to use the chats, but welcome again, everybody. So let's get this started. Uh, we Last week, we were talking about so many different things. We did like a recap of our last event that we had. We spoke about, you know, what does that look like? Um, what does that look like moving forward? We spoke a lot about uh, pretty much everything that we have in store. And today, what I want to talk about is getting back in the game getting back in the game. And a lot of us, you know, you already, you have never stopped being in the game, but I always do know that there is another level in each and every single one of us. If you agree that there's another level in each and every single one of you, type a one in the chat or say, hey, that's me. I want to see who I am talking to this morning. Yes, Lisa. Yes, Delicia. Yes, Vic. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure you're sending it to all panelists and attendees. Yes, Jared. Yes, Maida. Yes, yes, yes. I am here for it. So, so I will tell you, I, and it's interesting because yesterday for Women's Day, I started off my morning normally like my morning workout, right? With my pre-workout, with our energy, you know, take our supplements on a daily, our shakes, our greens. I just finished taking my Hydro FX. But I share this with you because after my workout, I went and I sat with a panel of female entrepreneurs. And I sat with this panel of female entrepreneurs from all different walks of life at Tori Birch. And I didn't know that Tori Birch has a foundation where her sole mission is to empower women entrepreneurs. And I'm talking about, we had women entrepreneurs on there that had plant nurseries to women that were running automotive, to women that owned uh, luxury fashion boutiques, to women that owned jewelry stores, um, to women that um, own influencing social media marketing agencies. It was such an amazing, it was such an amazing panel of women. And as they're sharing their stories and as they're you know sharing their journeys, it just hit me like a ton of bricks because each and every single one of them had something in common. Can anybody tell me, what do you think that all of these women from all walks of life, what do you think they had in common? Write it in the chat for me. What do you think? What do you think they had in common? Somebody said faith. Somebody said they were women. Yes, Delicia. Um, make sure you're setting it to all panelists and attendees. But here's one thing that they had in common. They went through some things and they got through on the other side. And here's another thing right? Yes, determination. Yes, they went through some struggle. All of these women had a mindset of a champion. And they all spoke about when there were different moments in one shape or another, when they were at the peak of their careers, or when they were in the middle of their greatest obstacle on their journey. And right when they got to the other side of that, that's when their magic happened. Each and every single one of them had to go through some darkness to be in the light that they're in right now. And they all spoke about different struggles. Yes, they. you can tell how they were so determined, how they just had a sense of perseverance, a sense of just, you know, umph that it was a grit factor that was allowing them to not only thrive in their businesses, but still thrive in their divine femininity as women. Because if we're being real, if we're, if we're being honestly speaking a lot of times, and I know even for myself, 
I've struggled with this, right? And I'm working on living my soft life. But a lot of us women, when we are in entrepreneurs and when we are working, it's sometimes struggle because we're used to being so strong to thrive in our divine femininity. And each and every single one of these women still remembered that above everything, they were not only women, but they were, they understood what their roles were. They understood what their roles were, not only to their families, to their communities. And when they thought, when they spoke about, yes, they had so much determination. Yes, they went through so many struggles, but each and every single one of them. And these are a few things that it reminded me of our club, right? It reminded me of our business because it's like, no matter what business you're in, no matter what endeavor you are pursuing, no matter what goal you are reaching for, there is a certain level of grit that is necessary to accomplish it. And it always starts with you making a decision. See, I understood getting back in the game. And when I'm talking about getting back in the game, I'm talking about going full throttle. Maybe you're on this call and you're brand new and I'm, I'm sharing with you my truth. You take it with a grain of salt. That does not mean that you have to go do it. It does not mean that if you're doing more or if you're doing less, this is not a comparison game, but this is more so for encouragement and empowerment. If that is cool with you, type a one in the chat for me so I can see who I'm talking to. Awesome. But the first thing is getting back in the game is to make a decision. It's making a decision because when you decide, you kill off all other options. See, I understood that me contacting five people a day, that was not me getting in the game to my fullest potential. So I had to make a decision to say, hey, I got to get back in the game full throttle. I have to get back in the game and understand that it's not going to be easy. I have to get back in the game and understand that it's going to take some time that I have to forgive myself. I want everybody to forgive yourself for not being where you where you want to be or where you think you should be. Because the truth of the matter is we made an appointment to be exactly where we're at right now. So free yourself of that, that you feel you should be further, that you feel you should be, you should have, you should have, you could have, you know, sh- we're exactly where we're at right now. Be grateful that we're not where we used to be. Yeah. Can anybody relate to that? I'd be like, listen, I ain't, I'm not really where I want to be, but listen, I'm grateful that I'm not who I used to be. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm not who I used to be a year ago. I'm grateful, right? If we're if we're honestly speaking, but it's being grateful for where you're at. It's being grateful for where you're going and knowing that the best is yet to come. And it's having that mindset. Once you make a decision, you understand that there no there are no other options, right? And you have to have a mindset of a champion because let's be real. When you go from hitting up people consistently, 10, 20 people a day, and when you're in the game and you're showing three to five people every single day, or even three to five people a week, and then you have a week that you ain't showing nobody, Can any? am I talking to anybody on here? We're just going to act like we're not? Okay, right? Exactly, 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 Michelle, right? We can all relate to that because we always, we all know that there is a next level. We all know that there's a next level. We all know that, yes, life happens. It happens. But don't beat yourself up about it. Forgive yourself for not living up to your fullest potential. Forgive yourself for not doing what we know we were supposed to do. Forgive yourself. But let's move forward. And how you move forward is, number one, like I said, making a decision. You make a decision to say, I'm going for it. You make a decision to say, hey, you know what? That Freedom Academy has my name on stage. That Freedom Academy um, platinum and above trainers Academy. I do not want to miss. I am going to get invited. You make a decision for whatever it is that you want. And you're getting back in the game is knowing that you have to have a mindset of a champion, because if you don't play to win, you're playing to lose. If we're not playing to win, it's like, I play softball. A lot of us were playing a softball Sunday. We had an entire club secret team. It was a blast. We love doing things for the community. It was a charity softball tournament. Uh, one of my cousins puts together out here in Tampa, and it was absolutely amazing. We had people come from Orlando. We had teammates come from Ocala. We had teammates come from all over. But guess what? Every time I was up to bat, I was trying to get on base. I was trying to get on base every single time I was, I was going to bat. Every single time I was going to bat, I was not trying to strike out. 
right? <laughs> Mamba, Roscoe, all of us, Josh, Kia, every single time. It didn't matter who we were on that field. All of us had one goal. Our goal was to get on base. Our goal was to hit the ball. We were playing to win. We were playing to win because if you're not playing to win, you already lost. So in anything in this, in this business, what does that mindset of a champion look like? It's knowing that you have everything in you to get this done. It's knowing that if you have a dream to do something, if you have a goal, if you have some type of any desire that God put in your heart, he gave you that for a reason because he's going to bring it to fruition. It's knowing that the best is yet to come. It's knowing that you're capable of doing anything and everything that you put your mind to. It's knowing that it doesn't matter what your back office looks like. Your mindset is upward and onward and forward. It's having that mindset of a champion because truth be told, two thoughts cannot occupy the mind at the same time. They cannot, right? If you were at Playbook, you saw the example of Muzaffer. He was like, okay, rotate your knees one, rotate your legs one way and rotate your arms the other way. And it's like, try to do it. And immediately, like nobody got it. I know I was struggling and I was like still that night, like I could do this. No, you can't because two thoughts cannot occupy the mind at the same time. And that is a fact of life. So if you're thinking about something good, but you're thinking about something bad at the same time, whatever you focus on is what you will follow. So what are you focusing on? Are you focusing on the things that you want to expand? Are you focusing on what's coming? Are you focusing on the people that you have to bless? Are you focusing on the new? Are you focusing on the community? Are you focusing on the positivity? Are you focusing on the things that you want to grow? Because what you focus on is what you will follow. But where attention goes, energy flows. So what is that mindset look like for you? Do you have a mindset of a champion? Do you have, are you telling yourself each and every single day, I can do this. I am doing this. I am crown royale. Like say it with, with, say it with authenticity, say it with grit, say it with desire, say it with feeling, say it like you mean it. Practice that speech when you're on stage. What, what does that, what does that look like for you? Having that mindset of a champion. And here's why that's important, right? Here's why it's important because can we agree that sometimes it doesn't feel good? Like it just, it doesn't feel good. And you have to have a mindset of, even though it may not feel good, I'm great. I'm going to do good. Even though it does not feel good. Like I was talking about this with somebody that was like, listen, I know one thing is like, it's me versus me. And there's not one person that you sit me in front of that is going to say no to my face. They might say no later on. They might say no um, a week after on the follow-up, but they're not going to say no. And if they do, all I'm thinking is next one, next opportunity. That's, I'm, I'm going for the no's. But I know what we have is so great that I've got to get it in front of as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. Because let's be real, it's about to be two weeks after Playbook, and a lot of us are not feeling that same energy. But if you, if you know one thing about our events, and this is one thing that I always tell teammates to practice, when you're at the event, close your eyes and just feel the energy. Feel the vibrancy of the room. Feel the feelings of where you were, of how it felt, of how did you feel when Eric Grispowski was on stage, of how did you feel when Michelle... Sailor destroyed the stage. <laughs> like, how did you feel? You know why it's important to take a moment to be present in those feelings, in that energy? Because when you get back home, there's a special way of you just closing your eyes and channeling that energy and channeling that feeling and channeling that moment that it allows you to get through. It allows you to keep going, that it allows you to know, listen, if this is, it ain't pretty. She told me it ain't pretty. Persistence never is pretty. If we're, if we're honestly speaking, but what does that mindset look like for you? Because if you do not have a mindset of a champion, if you are playing and you're not playing to win, you already struck out. And having a mindset of a champion goes hand in hand with having a compelling vision. When you're getting back in the game, what does that vision look like? See, all of these women, not only did they have mindset of a champion, but they all had a vision of what their lives were going to look like. 
each and every single one of them, from the jewelry maker to the luxury boutique, to the automotive guru, to a plant nursery owner, to a, the social media, you know what they all had? Vision. They had a vision because your vision is going to pull you when motivation can no longer push you. Because that compelling vision for your future, that compelling vision for your family, that compelling vision for your business, for your community, for what you want your life to look like. Have you taken the time to write it down? Have you taken the time to think of it? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, just I'm being real with you, okay? I just had, I showed somebody and this week, one of my showings was my wax girl, okay? And she's 21 years old. She has, every time we always have great conversations, and because we follow each other on social media, she thinks she knows me. Again, attraction marketing at its finest. You nourish different, diff you nourish different communities on your social media platforms. In your stories, you're nourishing one community. In your posts, you're nourishing another. And in your lives, you're nourishing another. But we'll get back to that later. But my point is, after I showed her, right, Josh and I did the presentation. It was really a conversation. We didn't pull out any slides. We showed her the back office. She's an esthetician. She wants to open her own esthetician. Can you type a one in the chat if you know for a fact that this is in alignment with where she wants to go and what she wants to do? Type a one in the chat for me. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Make sure you send it to oil panels and it's in D's, okay? About 30 of you guys on here. And I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm getting 30 ones. Well, here's what happens. We have a follow-up. She says she had the money to get started, but she's 21. So obviously she trusts her parents, even though her parents told her not to go to esthetician school. And she did it anyway, because sometimes we listen to our parents when we want to, because we, we have selective, selective uh, selection for advice, right? Retention. But I digress. But the point is, she sends me a message yesterday and is like, you know, I didn't notice that there was a, this is an MLM and, uh, this is not something that's in alignment with my business. I'm not going to lie. I looked at my phone and I was like, my, my immediate answer was going to be a dysfunctional red answer, right? But I'm better now. Thank God for personal development. Thank God for secret trainings. So thank God for God. But I said, I said, okay. Let me educate her. I said, yes, it actually does have an MLM component. A lot of business models utilize an MLM component as part of their marketing, affiliate marketing, et cetera. However, what I showed you and Josh showed you was a way to integrate these products into your business and your lifestyle. It was a way for you to capture market, for you to capture wallet share on every client, because a lot of times you're only getting paid one time, and this allows you to get paid multiple times in residual. But let me tell you why I was able to have the confidence to answer her in the way that I did, because my vision is crown royale. My vision is it's all gas and no brakes. My vision is hundreds of thousands of people in our secret community, in a part of Club Secret, millions eventually around the world with living the good life sign. My vision is for all of us to be set free. So I didn't really care too much about what her, what her response was. And that's all her very very candidly so I said listen I get it maybe you spoke to your parents because I've mentored a lot of younger people that spoke to their parents but I would love an opportunity to sit down with you and explain this to you and also explain it to them because let's be real I have mentored a lot of college students okay and they automatically go to their parents when we tell them don't go to your parents yes can we agree but I'm here to educate her so what I said to her so I said, and if you don't want to, that's okay too. Let me know because I have you in my schedule for Friday at 9.30 for a follow-up and I'll answer all of your questions then. If not, it's cool. I'm still gonna love on you. I will go get my wax next week and we'll see you. You know what her response was? I apologize. Please keep me on your schedule. I want to be more educated on what this is and how this can benefit me. Because my mindset is... What you talking about? Like, I know what I got in my hands. 
I know there's no better value offering. I know that there's no better opportunity. And I know that it doesn't matter what you do and who you are. We can integrate our business model into your lifestyle. We can integrate our business model into your goals, into your dreams, into your vision. So again, I ask you, what does your vision look like? Do you have a compelling vision that is going to pull you when motivation cannot push you because you're going through the obstacles and you're going through the nose and you're dealing with the rejection and you're dealing with the outlandish responses of people that just are uneducated? Because that's really what it is. They're just uneducated. They're uneducated. And when you know what that vision looks like, I want you to set some goals. Like I had to reevaluate what those goals what do those goals look like for me? Because those goals are a part of the vision. Yes, write your long-term goals. What does it look like in the next by the next event? What does it look like by Freedom Academy? Okay, in July 14th through the 16th. What does your goals look like a year from now? What do your goals look like five years from now? Where are you at? What, I want you guys to do this. Where visualize, Where are you going to be at a year from now? March 9, 2024, where are you going to be at, Michelle? Where are you going to be at, Dejanay? Where are you going to be at, Myra? Where are you going to be at? Like, where are you going to be? Ask yourself that because you got to see it. You got to see it. You got to believe it because if you don't, what are you working towards? Understand? So have a goal, have your long term goals. And when you're getting back into the game, understand that we got to prepare. So what does that preparation look like? Get back to making a list, make a new list. I made three brand new lists, okay? One list was of people that I have to follow up with. This is my follow-up list. This is of people that I've showed in the last six months to a year. What does your follow-up list look like? And the follow-up conversations are very, very, very similar. Hey, I showed you what I was working on three months ago, six months ago. I have some updates that are out of this world and make this thing a no brainer. When can I get 15 to 20 minutes of your time on Zoom? Then my next list, and I'm gonna repeat that. So I'm working on, I showed you what I was working on three months ago, six months ago, however long ago you showed them. These updates that they just released have absolutely made this a no brainer. When can I get, when can we get together for 15 to 20 minutes? What do you prefer in person or Zoom? Close-ended questions, because we don't do open-ended questions on this side. I'm giving you two options, because you're not going to tell me never, Ari. Some of y'all get that on the way out, okay? What does that look like? So moving forward, awesome. So a new list of people that I have never showed anything that I'm working on. This new list of people here, um, Suheni, it is saying, hey, I showed you what I was working on three months ago. You fill in the blank how long ago you sent it to them. These updates that they just released make this a no brainer. When can we talk for 15 minutes in person, in person or Zoom, which works best? If they tell me in person, or they tell me in Zoom, I said, cool, there is a sense of urgency. Can we do it in the next 24 to 48 hours? I want them to know I have a sense of urgency because I got a list of people that I'm going through, okay? So what does that look like for you? So follow-up list, a brand new prospect list. And we shared the brand new prospect list, my invite of what I've been doing um, last, last week. But if you weren't on the call, it's, hey, I'm working on something super fun and impactful. When can I sit with you for 15 to 20 minutes? Coffee or lunch, which works best? Morning or evening, which do you prefer? I'm working on something super fun and impactful. I'm sharing it with everybody I care about. If you wanna say, hey, I'm working on a vision for my future, but what does that new list look like? New list, new blood is the lifeblood. We hear that every single time. It's interesting too, because one of the lists that I am making is a list of old customers and also of old agents. And I'm not going to lie, that old energy is stale energy. That old energy is stale energy. I cringe when I'm calling that list, but I am giving them a chance to know what we got our hands on. And you get one shot. You get one shot at it. But again, you know why I'm able to go through 
through that darkness, because it's darkness, let's be real, it's darkness, okay? Because I have a compelling vision of what my future looks like. I have a compelling vision of where Secret is headed, of where we are in the co-creation phase, of how big this is going to get. Everybody's going to know what Club Secret was. You might as well be annoyed because I'm sharing it with you again. You might as well be annoyed with me than me be annoyed with myself later on because you got in from somebody else because I couldn't muster up the courage to go through the things that were not so fun, like following up with people that are no longer active or are just not doing anything, okay? But that is an essential list I feel like that we should all go through because you're gonna go through a lot of, a lot of the rocks, but you'll find some diamonds in there. You'll, you'll find some people and every dud knows a stud. You, you wanna build through them fast. Remember Michelle said it at training, they have that very small window of opportunity. Don't let that window close. Another list that you want to make as you're preparing to get back in the game is your list of customers. How many customers do you have? Whether it was from Black Friday, this year, last year, you have customers that buy every holiday. You have customers that repeatedly buy products from you. Follow up. Hey, thank you so much for being a loyal customer. Is it okay if I share with you some really cool updates that my company just released? No pressure. No pressure to doing the business. You can still be a VIP customer, but as a VIP customer, I just wanted to educate you on what we released. Is that okay? Here's where we miss a lot of the magic. A lot of times you think that because somebody got in as a customer, they're not gonna become an agent. And a lot of people that are agents today were customers first. You know why a lot of our customers become the best agents? Because what do we do when something's good? or bad. We love to brag. You see a good movie? I couldn't stop talking about Creed 3. Right? I went to the pre-release. I was like, oh, it's yeah, right? As good as bad, we love to brag. Yes, Maximo, a lot. <laughs> right? You're going to talk about it over and over and over and over again. And maybe when you share that information with them, maybe they're not going to transition from a customer into an agent. But how about if they refer you somebody? Because the highest compliment we can receive is the referral of your family and friends. And I have no problem in sharing somebody and saying, hey, I know that you love this and it may not be for you, but who do you know that loves to travel? Who do you know that wants to feel better or look better? Who do you know that wants to impact people's lives? Who do you know that wants to make a little bit of money or a lot of money? Who do you know that can use an extra thousand dollars residually every single month? What does that look like? Another list as we're preparing that you want to look like at in your back office is your back office reports, your club secret member reports. So another of the lists that I made was my 50-50 list because one of my goals is to go 50-50. So what does that look like for me on my left team? What does it look like for me on my right team? I'm writing everybody down. I'm writing everybody down. Shout out to Josh Valentine because that was his idea. Right. But yes, make your 50 50 list, because, again, if you don't have a vision, if you don't have a goal, how can you hit what you're not aiming for? Write it down. What, who's on your left team that is active? Who's on your on your right team that is active? You also have in your back office a club secret member report. Start there with the people that are already 50 that are already club secret members that are active. And why do you want to do that? Because again, 50-50 is you have your club secret membership that's active for $50 and you have a total subscribe and save or spending $50 or more every single month, right? So can we say if 50-50 is the goal and somebody is already on their club secret, can we say that all we half of the work is already done? Absolutely. Absolutely. Half of the work is already done. So that just makes it a lot more fun for all of us, right? But make that list and go through people. And here's what I found in making the list. Here's what I found. And again, some of this, maybe you going through stale old energy and that's okay because every dud knows a stud. But as I've been calling people, 
I've realized that people are just going through life and people really just need our community more than ever. People just really need the love. People just really need the light. Like when I, you know, one of the things that resonated me, with me the most that Jesse's always said, and it just reminds me of why I'm so in alignment with my assignment is because love is our legacy. And we give love to receive love and vice versa. But a lot of these people, this is what they're just missing. They're, we got to bring them to the light. And secret is the light. I'm just saying, this community is bright. This future of this company is bright. The future for the agents, the future for the customers. I mean, we're about to get art. Oh, sorry, I can't, never mind. Can't say that. <laughs> I guess uh, I can't, can't ruin the goods on that announcement. But the way that the technology is improving, like you thinking about you got customers that love our skincare, wait till we, wait till we drop what's releasing. That, there's no esthetician that's going to tell you no. There is nobody that is going to say no to what we have because it's only getting better and better and better. Like it's only getting better and better. Maximo was laughing because he was at Traders Academy. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, well, they did say that. The face scan, right? Okay, yeah, he did talk about it. Anyways, so um, see, just blonde moment. But yes, the face scan, like everything that it's working for our favor. Everything is working for our good. But a lot of these people just don't even know where it is that we're going, right? They don't even know. And that's like the half of it, Tiffany. Like the face scan is, is the half of it, right? Because he's not, he wasn't allowed to release everything, but that's a part of it. But that's huge in the world that we live in. It's huge, right? Yes, Maximo, only if you knew. I'm telling you, y'all want to get to platinum and above just to get the goods at Trainers Academies. But it's absolutely amazing what we have our hands on. But did you know that people don't even know that we have escaped your ways? A lot of these people that I'm reaching out to, I'm like, listen, we're doing a Thailand trip September 23rd through the 30th. Um, if you want access or you know anybody, listen, it's this is the price. You're getting this much in room credit. They're like, wait, you guys were able to put that together? Oh, I, I just thought you guys had the escape to Mexico. I said, oh, no, baby. We international, honey. We got Dubai. Dubai, that's the real way you pronounce it, okay, y'all? We got Dubai, we have Morocco, we have everywhere. We get in Costa Rica, we about to have round trip flights included to Italy. And did you know, on your club secret, you could go to member deals and if you just wanna bundle your flight, your hotel and your car rental, you could do all of that together. Like, did you know? Did you know? Because a lot of people, they don't know. So yeah. You going through these lists sometimes is going to be hurtful. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're probably going to cringe a little bit. But think about that one person that was on their knees last night or this morning at 12 o'clock. And this is 12 o'clock if you don't know. And it's not to impose my faith and belief upon anybody. But it's the reality. People are living quiet lives of desperation. And they have no idea how to get out of it. And because you made a phone call, hear me, you made a phone call that was uncomfortable for you. You were able to change the trajectory of somebody's life and somebody's generation to come. Think about that for a minute. So it's beyond travel. It's beyond looking better. It's beyond, beyond feeling better. Yes, we have the best products. It's a no-brainer, 100% 30-day money-back guarantee, baby, okay? It's amazing. But the community, the love, the light, the energy, the knowledge, the people that we are becoming in the process because of our training, because of our community is priceless. And people need that in this day and age more than ever. So let's do those uncomfortable conversations together. Because trust me, the reason I'm sharing this with you because it's uncomfortable for me too, but I'm still gonna go through it because hey, maybe that person is just going to become a customer again. Or maybe that person finally decided that they want to go on this trip, but maybe they're going to bring somebody on this trip that is going to put the next thousand people in your business. Maybe they're going to bring somebody to the next training event that is going to take your business to the next level. But you know who is the first person that's going to take our business to the next level? You, the person in the mirror. 
I've always heard um, if you want a helping hand, uh, look at the end of your wrist, right? Because it starts there. So what does that preparation look like for you? Now, we already made the decision, right? We said, hey, we got to have a mindset of a champion as well. We set a vision of what that looks like. We wrote down our goals long-term. We prepared for that. Now, what does that look like on a daily basis? Again, going through your back offices, reports, making lists that are going to help you. Now, the execution part of it, excuse me. Now, when you're talking about executing, it's action. It's saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I said, I'm probably going to do, if you said you're going to do it, just do it. And the reason part of your execution is, we have to do micro goals, right? And we don't have to, but this is what I'm doing. And a lot of people that I see that are successful do micro goals. And these are little things that you can do every day that affect the big goals. So yes, one of the big goals is Crown Royale. Yes, one of the big goals is Ruby. It's Diamond by the next event. But what can I do today that affects that? What are the little things that I can do in the next two to three weeks that are going to help me maximize that, okay? One of them, it goes to what we were talking about, making the list, calling people off of the list. So every day I'm like, okay, I got to call seven from my follow-up list. I got to call seven from my new ones. I got to reach out to seven from brand new prospects. So it's 21 every single day. That's, that's what that looks like for me. You set the micro goal that works best for you. A lot of people like to do nine by nine. We've talked about this a lot of times or 10 by 10, that is nine calls or nine messages. And this is why I love what we do because whether you have a full-time job, you have a part-time job, you can still do this at your pace. You can still do this on your own. You can still do this in a schedule that works best for you. So what does that look like? Is it nine by nine? Is it three? Is it five? Is it 10? Set a number, Set it, write that down and make sure every single day that you execute on that. What do those calls look like every single day? How many of them are you going to do? What, how many messages out of those people are you sending? Because it's not just messaging. It's not just making the calls. You want to switch it up because ultimately you don't want to get bored right? You don't want to get bored. You want to still have fun. So switch it up a little bit. Be like, okay, I'm going to make this amount of calls. I'm going to send out this amount of messages. So nourish, nur um, grow however it is that you want, but whatever you set that you're going to execute, follow through and do it. Now, when you're little micro goals every single day, now, what is that? Are you talking about the product to one new person a day? Are you showcasing these products in your lifestyle? Guys, we live in a world where people are watching us more than ever. A lot of the appointments that I've been I've been setting are with people here in the Tampa Bay community from the networking events that I've attended and why we always exchange social media because now people watch me every single day and they feel like they know you. Like this girl yesterday that I reached out to, meeting her this morning at 1030, she said, you know what? I absolutely love you. And I just, and I know I, we've only met in person twice. She said, but I absolutely love you. You encourage me from your daily post of your morning scriptures to your daily post of your working out to what you take. I've been wanting to know what it is that you take because I see you take it every single day, right? And listen, if you follow me on social media, you know, you can see me, you will see me turning up in the club. Like you'll see me turning up for Jesus in church. Okay. I'm me, but I show who I am, but people now they start to think they know you. They know you because of your social media. And to an extent they do because you are what you do repeatedly. You become what you do repeatedly. Understand? So it's like, take time to build your brand. Take time to make sure that you are showing up on social media and you're not being salesy either, but make sure that it's in alignment. Make sure that when people go to your page, it doesn't look like an infomercial. Make sure that you're adding value to people. So one of the rule of thumbs, and we talked about this, is one out of four, right? If, again, being yourself, yes, right? Being the best version of you, but one out of four. So what does that mean? So one out of every four posts can be you selling something. 
So you'll see me post a link to my products, but you're seeing me adding value before I do that. So what things can you do every single day or to help you build your business that's not the traditional way? And the reason why I'm saying not in the traditional, it wasn't traditional 10 years ago, but in the last three years for social selling, because it's what we do, or network marketing or direct sales, however you want to uh, dress it up, a lot of people are online. We have more captive audience today than we do ever. So what is something that you can do online to integrate what you do to who you are? to integrate your brand and your business together, show people, and you don't have to do it every single day. But if you're going to talk about your hydro FX, talk about three benefits, talk about three features, talk about how it helped you talk about what you use every day. Maybe you're not the person that likes our pre-workout. Like I do. Maybe you're not the person that likes the shakes and greens. Maybe you're the skincare person. Like, I honestly, I don't talk more about the skincare because I'm not consistent with my skincare routine. Just be real. I love my glow line. Like, but there's times that I'm up late and I'm not, I'm not doing my skincare routine. Like just be real. And it shows my face. Right. But I also love our skincare, our skincare, because my face has been the best that it's ever been since I was 15 and I'm 37. Yes. Okay. So what are you an advocate for? What are you using every single day that you can display in your social media that you can display so people can know that you have something that can be a value to their life, can be a value to their life, right? So integrating that into your game plan. Your Another thing is when you are going out and executing, engineering your environment for success. Engineering your environment for success. I'm in my home office right now. I have to get out of here. I have to get out of my home office. I go work by my pool sometimes. I go work in different coffee shops. I look up different places where I can go work from. Why? Because I always want to engineer my environment for success. And I always want to stay ready so I don't got to get ready. And why does that mean? Because a lot of times, sometimes I'll set an appointment with someone. Like today for 1030, we're supposed to meet. Now, whether she goes there or not, plans change, decisions don't. I'm still going to be there because I have the expectancy that somebody else is going to show up, that I am going to connect with somehow in some way that I'm going to be able to add value to them because of what I'm a part of. So it's having that level of expectancy, but engineer your environment for success. Sometimes I can't be in my house because I get stir crazy a little bit. Yes, Max, something is coming out of that meeting. Absolutely. And you have that level of expectancy because you deserve, you know, you deserve greatness. You know, you deserve to win. You know, the best is yet to come. You know, you have the best products in your hand. You know that you have the one of the things that's going to add the most value to people's lives. Expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. So engineer your environment for success, but remember that plans change, decisions don't. So whatever it is that you're going to do, do it. And if somebody doesn't do it, cool. Now let's say another part of engineering your environment for success. If it's loud where you're at or you're easily distracted, change it up. Find a place of peace because prosperity comes from peace. You gotta be at peace to be able to prosper. You have to be at peace to be able to prosper in any aspect of your life. So if you don't feel where your spirit is at ease and you don't feel that you can get back into the game and you don't feel that you can execute at the highest level, like you know you have it in you, you have to switch up your environment. You have to go to a place that's going to be conducive for your success. See, I know like I'm a, I'm a people person. Like I love seeing people. I love people watching. Right. I love complimenting people. Like I, it just, a lot of, a lot of my conversations come from me just complimenting a girl on her shoes or me just complimenting somebody on how they smell. They're like, Oh, I love that perfume. It smells really good. What is that? Right. And it's genuine because I love to smell good. If you know, you know, right. I look, I love to dress good because you, you dress good. You feel good. You feel good. You perform good. Right. My mother used to always say, dress your best because you are the best. But anyhow, a lot of times it's just me complimenting somebody on their outfit and the conversation comes. Oh, what do you do? Oh, what well, is this? Conversation. 
right? You just never know which way it's going to go, but are you engineering your environment for success? Switch up your energy. Your ambiance is everything. And even when you're sitting with that prospect, if that prospect is you want that prospect's attention on you, but you're sitting in a zone where they're being distracted by the door and they're seeing everybody that's walking in. No, 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 no. Come. You're going to stay right here where all you can do is look at me and look at what I'm talking about. You're not going to see what's coming through the door. You're not going to see everything else going on because nothing else matters but what I have to share with you right now. Is that, is that helping anybody on here today? Awesome. So again, getting back into the game starts with making a decision, making a decision, having that mindset of a champion. You know, what are some things that you can do to fuel that mindset? Whether it's calls like this, Jared's calls, the company calls, Josh's calls, there's so much value in our community. It's insane. I love it. Right. What does your vision look like? Because that vision is going to pull you and motivation can push you. What do your goals look like? Long-term, short-term, prepare, make your list, go through your back office reports and execute. Execution, execution is key. So another, another thing that I did want to add on here, I, my notes just reminded me of, is that another list that you want to have as you're getting back into the game, as you're preparing, is your list of your, of your testimonial list. So who do you have on your testimony list? See, I have the best upline in the world. Like I do have the filet mignon of uplines, but I also know that all of my uplines have children and have a family and they have wives. So I have a testimony list. I called the Schneider twins the other day. I reached out to Janie the other day, um, Janie and Raymond Braun. I have, I had Jeff Balf the other day on speed dial because I was dealing with a former insurance agent. Who's on your testimony list? And it doesn't have to be people like Jeff, Jeff Ball for anybody that I mentioned, but who do you have on your testimony list? Because you can get a testimony from anybody that's not you. That's an expert. Your prospect doesn't know who that is, but that's a huge part of this because that is something that is going to help you execute, okay? Because again, facts tell, but stories sell. So get back in the game, make a decision, mindset, vision. What do your goals look like? prepare and execute. This has been your breakfast club call for Thursday, March 9th, 2023. And as always, it is my pleasure to serve each and every single one of you guys. Great day and God bless. Looking forward to each and every single one of you guys winning. Have a good one guys. And the recording will be up in the next 24 to 48 hours. Appreciate y'all.